Glorify Amen. the Lord. Amen. Amen. Good to see everybody tonight. Yeah. Yeah. It's Amen. lovely. It's been a beautiful week this week. Last week wasn't so nice, but it's been beautiful this week. Amen. Amen. And, uh, we pretty much kind of stays this way. Amen. Amen. I'm good with that. Yeah. Anyway, well, welcome to the services. Excited about what the Lord's doing tonight. Uh, don't forget, uh, Saturday morning, we have soul winning and bus visitation at 10 o'clock. Amen. Yes. So be there or be square. Amen. Where that came from. But anyway, so come out and help us if you would. Come out and go soul winning, work on the bus routes, whatever the Lord would have you to do. And then Sunday morning, our regular services, and Sunday night after the services, we have our food fundraiser for the teen department. Amen. Amen. So all that stuff we committed to bring for last Friday that we didn't get to bring, we didn't get the privilege to bring it. All right. So be sure you bring it Sunday and bring some money so you can buy it back. Amen. And then they'll also be having a dessert auction. I'm looking forward to that. Some homemade, hopefully homemade cookies. I know the king that all has to be homemade. Everything has to be homemade. So be sure you, uh, never mind. I was going to say take some antidote or something like that, but anyway. <laughs> Amen, but we'll have a good time with that. So we'll be praying for that. And then ladies, don't forget. Uh, if you haven't already registered, you can still do that. It'll cost you just a little bit more, but you can still register to go to the ladies' conference on the 13th and the 14th. That'll be a good time. Mrs. Walker uh, is the main speaker, and you will really enjoy her. And then Mrs. Chadwick and Mrs. Stewart will also be speaking in some of the breakout sessions. And so please let, every, please let my wife or Mrs. Hughes know uh, so they can get you registered for that. That's this coming not this weekend, but next weekend, a week from this Thursday. And so be, be working on that. And uh, praise the Lord, our missions is still ahead this week, amen. It was a little down, but we're still ahead. So let's try to make that up and stay ahead, amen. And then if you haven't gotten yours, the Baptist bread is back on the table for November and December. So grab that and uh, study along. Those are Some of those are really good. All of them are good, but some of them are really good. Amen. So I'll be praying, Amen. reading over that, studying the Word of God. The more we can get in, the better off we'll be. Yes, Amen. And uh, so be doing that. And please don't forget to be praying for uh, our family. Uh, we, mo I, I believe most of our family is saved. Uh, I know there's a couple that may be away from the Lord, so pray for them that the Lord would use this time to draw them back yes. to Him. And then for friends that will be there, Miss, uh, my mother-in-law was you know, like the social bug of the world. She was, she was a socialite. And so she didn't meet a stranger. And she had lots of friends at work. And some of them will be there. And some of them may not be saved. So pray for, for the Lord to save folks that aren't Amen. saved and reclaim those that are away from him. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and then pray for me. I have to travel with Timothy. <laughs> he finally got it. He looked at me real funny back there. And uh, pray for Jacksonville. The whole Copeland family is going to be there at one time. So anyway, but let's stand together, if you would, tonight and take our hymn books as we get ready for our offering and turn to page 240, The Lily of the Valley. Amen. The Lily of the Valley, 240. Yeah. 
services tonight. Bless this offering, Lord. Use it and stretch it for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 shocked that I was here when you came in, right? But uh, we were going to leave Tuesday, but since Mom decided to skip out on the party, <laughs> She's <having a> better party. <laughs> she went to the, a, a much better party. Amen. 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 So instead of being gone yesterday and today, we're leaving in the morning, and then we'll be back Saturday evening sometime late. Uh, so I had already asked Brother Charlie to preach for us tonight. Amen. And since it takes a lot of time and effort to study and prepare, I didn't want that to be in vain. So let's give Brother Charlie a good hand as he comes to preach for us tonight. Amen. I, uh, by studying for this, this is not where I was going, but it's where I'm going. Proverbs 3. I, uh, I've listened to my wife get mad about this election coverage. Yeah. Fired up is a good word. I didn't know if I was going to hold her down or not. She, she was not happy with what was going on. She'd like to straighten it out. But she's telling the wrong person. I couldn't help yeah. so. Anyhow, one, one of the things I always think about when I think about my salvation and being a Christian is Hagar when... Uh, Abraham and Sarah had kicked her out, and she's out in the wilderness with uh, her son, and she sat down under a bush and thought she was going to die, and the Lord spoke to her and showed her where the water was, and she said, Thou, God, seest me. Right. And I think, how amazing yeah. that God did see her, mm -hmm. but even more amazing, he saw you. Right. Thou, God, he saw each one of us. He saved us. Yeah, and, right. and that in itself should be amazing. I mean, yeah, amen. You, you tell me why that we deserve to be saved. We don't. That's right. We're saved by right. grace. I understand amen. that. That's only the blood of Christ. Yeah. But that God would look down upon us that he would save us. And snatch us out of the fires of hell. Basically, we're, we were on our way. Yeah. So anyhow, I, I want to kind of get that thought tonight. And to go along with that, you know, the verse, well, let me read the verse. In Proverbs 3, verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not thine own understanding. 
In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Amen. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Amen. Amen. The reason I want to read that, we all say we trust the Lord. Yeah. Uh, I had a family member once I invited to church and finally got her there, and the preacher mentioned one thing about tithing, and she said the only thing he ever preaches about is money. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where she got it, but I said that say this. For years at, at the fair ministry, and uh, I wouldn't talk about tithing. I just didn't. And the Lord find, kindly gave me one of these one day and said, why not? If we can trust God with our lives, and we say we do, mm -hmm. and if we can trust him with our tithes, then surely we can trust him in an election. Yes, sir. Amen. You know, I, I don't know what the Lord has in mind. I think our prayer should be, Lord, show us what you're trying to do through this and help us to get involved with you. Amen. Yeah. So right. and maybe he's putting some people in place he'd like to see saved. Yeah. And he'd like to see Central Baptist Church praying for him. That's yeah. it. Uh, you can Amen. go back to the Clintons, the Obamas. Maybe Biden will get in. Maybe he won't. I don't yeah. know. That's right. But I don't think anything happens in this world without a purpose. Amen. God is involved in the affairs of this world and as we've all said he's still reigning he's still ruling and he's going to work in through all these circumstances our problem is how we're going to respond right. uh, be like Gloria get fired up that's okay too it's good for your heart it gives, gives the problem some blood Amen. So, but anyhow we'll, we'll kind of jump off there Lord we love you we thank you for this day we thank you for your love your mercy, your goodness to us. Again, we pray and forgive us, cleanse us, fill us with thy spirit. Pray just bless tonight. I pray to encourage each of our hearts. I pray draw us near to thee, Lord. Archie's been gone a little over a week, but Lord, we pray to revive us, stir our hearts, draw us near to thee. And Lord, help us truly to trust in you with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, our strength. And Lord, just again, be honored and glorified in through all we do here tonight. In Christ's name, amen. May be seated. If you look up behind me, it says, Rejoice in the Lord again. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And how can you rejoice when some of this stuff's going on? Yeah. I mean, what, what's there be, to be rejoicing about? And yet, if we believe that God's working through all these things, we ought to be rejoicing. We, we ought to be singing those psalms and hymns and spiritual psalms, singing, making melody in our hearts to the Lord. I really believe in that with all my heart. And I, I know my biggest problem, and I've told people before, when, when there's no song, something's wrong. Yep. Did you get that? There's no song, something's wrong. Uh, I'm not where I should be with the Lord. Maybe I got sin in my life to boot. I don't know, but I'm not where I should be. So at that point, we need to find a remedy, don't we? So these verses back here I, uh, in Ephesians, it talks about singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for some things. No. Giving thanks always for all things and again it's a decision okay it is absolutely a decision because who wants to give thanks for some of the things going on but we can still give thanks no that god's working through them he's got a purpose he'll make the bible says he'll make the wrath of man to praise him he will do that he will turn around i think about job you know there was job a righteous man and yet the lord allowed satan to afflict him uh, basically steal all of his possessions. He allowed all those things into his heart and life, but was it just for fun? Or was it so that Job would grow in his faith and trust? Amen. That Job would really see who God really is. Amen. You know, you think about the Lord, I don't know if you've ever prayed, prayed about it or not, but sometimes I think, Lord, you're omnipotent. That means you're all-powerful. You can do anything you want to do. He can, if he did that, why don't he fix this election? Yeah. He can do anything he wants to do. But I can't, my mind cannot comprehend what is omnipotent. Yeah. My mind cannot comprehend that he spoke in creation and it was done. Amen. Figure that one out. Right. So sometimes our minds are, and I'm, I'll use me, don't take it wrong, my mind at least is so small, I guess, that, that I can't, I don't get it. And we need to get it. We need to pray about it. How about the fact that he's present everywhere all the time? He knows. Yeah. Right. Joe Biden don't know it, but he's, he's right there. He's close to Joe Biden somewhere. He's in this universe. He's aware of all that's going on, including Joe Biden and what he's thinking. So, 
He's all powerful. He's, he's present everywhere. And just all knowing. Yeah. He, he knows yeah. how many hairs are on my head. And I keep losing them, so it's getting to be an easier job. I understand that. But, but he's still. You know, I don't know much about this dumb watch. I bet the Lord does. I don't know a lot about this building, but I bet the Lord does. I bet he can tell you where the cracks are in the floor. And there's, some, there's some humps in that fellowship hall if you don't know it. And he can tell you where they're at, too, where the concrete about got away from them. So he's all-knowing, he's all-powerful, and he's present everywhere. You know, our problem, my problem at least, is not I know these things intellectually, but I don't know them here. I don't know them in my heart. Yes, sir. It's hard, again, for me to comprehend. I don't know those things. So now it's back to that little verse we started with. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And I think just like this election, I think we, I don't know how it's going to turn out. It's far from over. But if Biden wins, we need to probably ask God, how do we pray? Amen. I know we can pray for salvation. I know we can pray that God will bring people into his path that will help him make, I'm going to say, better decisions. Maybe not the decisions we want, but maybe not as bad as they could be. Right. You know, I want, I want you to think about this. And I've, I've shared it with others, but the apostles, including Paul, where were they at? They were in the middle of the Roman Empire. And the Romans basically owned them. And they were under them, and they had to obey them and do those things. And like Paul, he was locked up for years, just held a prisoner. But he, he called it the bonds of Christ. He was a bond servant for Jesus Christ. He knew that it was God's will, and he obviously, like us, he didn't know exactly how the Lord was going to work through it, but he did get a free trip to Rome. <laughs> and if you look at it, he got a free trip. And the people, probably a lot of the people he were chained to got saved. Amen. Amen. A lot of the other people, acquaintances that he made in Rome, they got saved. God had a purpose. He's got a purpose in all of them. You know, the one thing that, that I know that we're, we think about once in a while, and, and I kind of, today I was thinking about a little bit, is the second coming of Christ. Of course, I'm talking about the rapture for the church. But kind of, I thought about, I thought, you know, it's almost selfish for me to wish that it would come. Because when it comes, it's going to unleash that tribulation period on this earth. Yeah. And those last three and a half years are going to be hell on earth. And those people that are caught here, wow. Yeah, right. So it's almost selfish. And I'm talking to me. I believe it's almost selfish on my part to wish that it would come. And I do. I thought 2016 had to. And we're still here. It's 2020 going on 21. But think about the people that would be left behind. I can tell you, some of you know that we, uh, Times Square is where we blitzed last night. And Miss Connie, Miss Terry, and who else? Miss Harrelson. Harrelson, and Gloria and I. And I met a couple in the parking lot, and they said they'd be here tonight. They're not. The <laughs> pastor went to the dentist today. And his hygienist, and he got to talking to her, and he, he gave her one of our smile traps. She said, I got one of them last night. It was on my car. And she got it at Times Square. And she said she'd be here. <laughs> so, and she's not here either. But at least it, it got their attention for a moment, and maybe they'll come Amen. Sunday. Her name was Brittany. The, others, the other lady's name was Chloe. Chloe and Eric. So there's two people you can put on your prayer list and pray with, pray for. But... We just keep giving out the gospel. We just keep going. Yeah, yeah. You know, the Bible says his word won't return void. Yeah. And I believe that. Now, they may pitch that track in the, on the ground. They may pitch it in the trash. But we've done our job. We gave them the gospel. We put it within their reach or in most cases in their hand unless it fell off their car. So we just need to keep on keeping on for Christ and just realize trust. Yeah. Now, I know I'm always harping about reading your Bible, and I'm always harping about praying, but that's where trust is going to start. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's right. Every day. That's right. Every day. If you don't, and I always say make that day. Make that day with the Lord. Get up a little early. Stay up a little late. I don't care. But make a day. 
Say, Lord, I'll meet you at the kitchen table, 10 o'clock in the p.m., and we'll read our Bibles and we'll pray. Or I'll meet you at 5 in the a.m., and we'll read our Bibles and we'll pray. Many of us who are retired, uh, we're stewards. I told my Bible class in the school, I said, we're stewards. That means we're responsible to vote because we're stewards of that which God has entrusted us with, but we're also very much stewards of his time. Yeah. Amen. Amen. His time. It's not my time. It's his time. Yeah. So with, with all that said, just want to talk a little bit about joy tonight. Uh, there, there's a lot said in the Bible about joy, and that yeah. verse, uh, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, and uh, I think that's, that's something we ought to be trying to do. We ought to be trying to, when we go out from the house every day, we ought to be going out with a merry heart, singing, making melody in our hearts to the Lord, and be thankful. I harp on this all the time, too, or at least some of the time, but we are not a thankful people. I'm sorry, we're not. We, we, we think that we're owed, and we're not owed. And that's really where the left is going. They all think they're owed. They think there's a free ride. And there's no free ride. Somebody's got to work. Somebody's got to work to pay the bills. So turn your Bibles to Acts 16. We're going to start there. And I won't promise to keep you all night. I think I got seven pages, so. We'll take the short version. How's that? Just some seven thoughts tonight. Joy is a command. Be joyful to rejoice in the Lord. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. If we're walking in the Spirit, if we're filled by the Spirit, we'll be doing those things. If we're not, we're probably not. You know, if, if, you, if you had an old sour-faced Christian trying to witness to you, what would you think? <laughs> I don't know what they got. They must have been eating sour lemons. That, that's what, that joy, it, honestly, it ought to bubble over. We ought to be like a, a spring springing up out of the ground. It ought to just bubble over. It ought to come out. Amen. The trials of life and some of the things that, that we as people get so wrapped up in, they're really nothing. And Brother Stewart could probably tell you, and Brother Copeland, and Brother Maxwell, how many marriages have, and this is just free, how many marriages have split and wound up in divorce over a bunch of little bitty things that didn't mount to a hill of beans. Yeah. They just kept kept on doing those little things and they didn't repent and they didn't really forgive. Yeah. They held that grudge in their heart, unforgiveness, and it's just like lifting the rug up and sweeping the trash under it. Sooner or later there's going to be a pile there and you'll stumble over it. So just learning that the Lord permits things into our lives help grow us, right. to make us more like Christ. That's Amen. his goal, to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we ought to rejoice that, that he's taken the time to do that. That's right. I told somebody the other day, and I don't remember who it was, but I said, you know what? The Lord puts a man and a woman together, I think, knowing that they're going to grind on each other. They're just like sandpaper. They're going to grind on each other. Gloria's going to do things I don't like, and Nothing. And I'm going to do things I guarantee you she don't like. So we just kind of grind on each other. But it's how we respond. You know that? It's how we respond. And sometimes you just got to back up and say, Lord, help. Just got to get down on your knees. Something I'm going to challenge you to do. And some of you that are here every day can do it. Every time you walk down this hall, Walk into this auditorium, kneel down, and just pray a short prayer. Mm -hmm. Every time. We say we believe prayer works. Every time you walk down the hall, just a short prayer. Get down on your knees and pray. We say we believe it works. I'm challenging you. Let's, let's see if it works. Amen. Okay, Acts oh, 16. Is that what I said? Yes, sir. That'll work. when I get there. Uh, verse 16. It says, And it came to pass as we went to prayer, prayers, Paul and Silas, 
a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying or fortune telling. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this she did many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, Did you say who he's talking to? To the spirit. The demon, the devil, whatever you want to call it. Okay. I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of her the same hour. And when her masters saw that their hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. And brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. And teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into the prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. At midnight, you ought to underline this, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Amen. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awakening out of his sleep, seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Yeah. Yeah. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Amen. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour and washed their stripes and and was baptized he and all his straightway. And when they had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. Yeah. When I read the, these verses and I think about them, uh, I mean, here's Paul and Silas, and they basically cast the demon out of this young woman, and her owners, you know, they know that they, they've lost their source of income because she's not going to be telling any more fortunes, or at least not getting them right. She's not going to have any more help. So they're mad, and they take it before the magistrates. And when you think about that, I don't think sometimes we try to get a, a picture in our mind of what's really going on. Do you think they just kind of said, would you guys please go down and see the judge with me? Mm -hmm. I think they had some big old boys get a hold of them and drag them down before the judge, and they probably threw them up against the wall. And then the magistrates, of course, commanded them to be beaten. And so often we don't think about, what's it mean to be beaten? What's it mean? This thing called scourging. And yet it's, it's horrible. It doesn't say how many stripes, but 40 stripes would kill a man. And it's a cat of nine tails, each tail having a little barb in it or glass or rock or stone or whatever. And when they take that thing, it was supposed to tear the flesh, but the way that really helped it work was they took them like that, tied their hands together, and then pulled them up until their toes were just barely touching the ground. So they've got that skin on their back stretched nice and tight. And when that whip hits it in those barbs, it just tears. Now I'm saying all that to get a picture of what they went through. And then they, they took them down, they threw them in the innermost part of the prison. You know, we think about our prisons. Yeah. I had a man I went to Bible college with from Nigeria, and he talked about the prisons there. He said, one big room, everybody's in the room, bathroom, hole in the middle of the floor. <laughs> Not very sanitary, not very clean. But you know the other thing about Paul's prison? Rats. Oh, big rats. Mice. And you know, when a leper went to prison, or a place like that, many times he would come out of that prison minus fingers and toes because he couldn't feel the rat chewing on him. So I'm saying all that to say, they weren't in a nice place. And they went through all this. Sometimes we go through little bitty, little bitty trials and we cry and whine like it was the end of the world. Amen. It's not the end of the world. And God will Amen. give grace. Amen. I don't know, some of you may know the name Richard Wormbrand. He and his wife 
had a church in communist Romania. And they, after become communists, they kept witnessing. I mean, witnessing the soldiers. They tried to pray about it and be careful, but eventually they both got caught and were in prison. And I am not even going to talk about the atrocities that they went through. But they survived. They lived. And today they're joyful. Fanny Crosby. No, not Fanny Crosby. Uh, Corey Timboon. The things she went through in prison. And yet she came out joyful. Amen. And she even saw one of her guards at a, at a revival meeting who got saved. Wow. And she had to make a decision. Now what do I do? Do I forgive him? Or no? And she did. So I'm, I'm just saying, you know, there's going to be trials. There's going to be troubles. These men that went through excruciating pain, we have no, no idea. Fastened in the stocks. They can't hardly move around. They can't do nothing. They're just there. And you know, that prison was probably cold and damp besides being nasty and dirty. Yeah. So it, it was no place that you wanted to be. Uh, we have air-conditioned prisons today. Yeah. So we, we don't know what the rest of the world knows. But at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. The Bible says the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It talks about praying without ceasing. You know, there's times we can't do much, but we can pray. Amen. This election, we can't do much, but we can pray. Right. And it's what we should be doing. And with all this, you have to wonder, is God trying to draw us back closer to him? I think he is. I don't have any doubt. He wants a people that truly love him with all their heart, their soul, their mind, and their strength. He wants a people sold out for him. I've said it before. Job one is pleasing God in our thinking and in our behavior. That's our job is, is to walk with God, to please him in what we do and what we think. Yeah. And I know many work, some are retired. But we all have a place where we have to be. Yes, but the, the first place we need to be is walking with the Lord. Yeah. We need to be doing that. I can't think, think of something bad that you could be doing tomorrow. And all of a sudden your heart stops. And you're standing in front of the Lord. But that could be true any day. That's what I want you to think about. That's possible any time. If we're living in sin and doing things we ought not to do and being places we ought not to go, and this old heart stops ticking, we'll still be before the Lord. We'll be there. There'll be no more opportunities. That's why it's so important to walk with the Lord, because today might be that day. Tomorrow might be that day. God didn't promise Brother Stewart, Brother Frazee, any of us tomorrow. So I just wanted to focus on this tonight. Think about the fact that a lot of people have gone through a lot of trials and tribulations. Yes, sir. And they've come out praising and thanking the Lord. Amen. We need to realize joy is a command. We need to learn the secret of true joy. And we'll get there. Realize that the great value, if you want to say, of joy. Yes. Uh, that's not the word I really want, but that's what I've got. So how do you get it? Where do you get it? These are things we need to think about. How do you maintain it? What can you do? I mean, you may get up and start out right, and then Gloria makes me mad, and I'm starting out wrong now. I'm picking on her tonight. But anyhow, I'm saying all that to say, this whole life is like a, a minefield, okay? We're walking through it, and there's going to be trials and tribulations, and, and sometimes we just step on landmines. And then we just got to back up, and, and that's when we get down on our knees and say, Lord, help me. Amen. I, I've said it many times. You know, somebody makes you mad, number one, you need to go see them. But before you go see them, you need to go see the Lord. You need to get down on your knees. Amen. You need to pray. You need to seek his face and, and beg him to give you wisdom to work through that situation, but to do what you're supposed to do. Amen. Because unresolved conflicts in a marriage is going to lead to a divorce if it keeps going. But in a church, in a church family, it can lead to a divorce. I think one of, one of the worst things we do sometimes, and we've all been guilty of it, is just gossip. And I have a new, new way of handling that one. I, I tell my kids, and I think I may have said in my class, if you're going to gossip, gossip to the Lord. Go get down on your knees and tell him, do you see what that old Charlie Hughes done? Can you believe it? And you just keep talking to him. And then... 
pray that he'll help you come see me and we'll get it worked out. Maybe you didn't see what you thought you saw. Maybe you didn't hear what you thought you heard. Maybe you misinterpreted. And maybe I did it. Who knows? But the fact is, we've got to love one another. Husbands and wives, we've got to love one another. Because ain't none of us perfect. <laughs> She's shaking her head. Ain't none of us perfect. But God is perfecting us. Amen. That's his goal. That's what he wants us to do. He wants us to grow on the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus. Uh, again, they had been beaten and battered. They've been, uh, again, I don't think we can comprehend that kind of a beating. I really don't. That's a note I have says, you know, people in the world, you have people you know that are lost. Where are they trying to find their joy? Things. Things? It could be a house, car, Money. computer, clothes. For you ladies, a new pair of shoes, a new purse. For the guys, a new pickup truck. Amen. We're looking for it in things. You know, I've had a new car or two in years past, but the thing I found out about them is I really liked them until the second or third payment. Yeah. They weren't so great after that. So things will never bring us joy, you know. Uh, but the world is running after things. The world is looking for what you've got. And I said all that to say this. It may be an open door sometime when you're around somebody that's discouraged and they're going through the trials and tribulations of this world that you can point them to Christ. Provided our, our face looks like we really love where we're going. And our attitude expresses that we really love where we're going and what God's doing in our heart. I mean, I told you about the friend in the tithe. Why? How many people give grudgingly? Yeah. Wow. And it's to their hurt. It's to their, their damage in the end. And how many people don't give at all? Yeah. The Bible still says, Give and shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, so shall men give unto thy bosom. And now you can take that and put it in your marital relationship. Put it in your relationship with people here in the church that, that bug you. Do something special for them. Take them out to dinner. Buy them a cup of coffee. Buy them a present. Buy them some breath mints if that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but, give. Yeah. You know, as I, as I was thinking about this and thinking about joy, and I'm sure both, many of you can identify with this, how many times have you went to visit somebody in the hospital, maybe in their home. You went to try to be in encouragement. And who came away blessed? Because you gave. You gave. And that's what we do as Christians. We just give and we keep on giving. Because that's what the Lord did for us. He gave and he's still giving. And he's still putting up with our sins, <laughs> our transgressions, our false steps. So I just encourage you, we need to do everything we can to maintain that joy in our heart so that we can be an encouragement one to another and to others. Because I, I don't believe God can use a sour-faced Christian or someone is discouraged all the time. The, world, the world's got enough discouragement. They need some encouragement. So just, the Bible again says, rejoice evermore, pray, with it. pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In 1 John, if you want to go back there with me real quick, chapter, kind of jumping ahead, but that's all right. 1 John chapter 1. I'm just going to start at verse 1. That which was from the beginning, from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. I believe, again, when you're discouraged, 
when you're downcast, when you're troubled, when you're going through trials, pick the book up. Get a concordance out. Look for some verses, maybe they go along with your circumstances. But get in the book. I love the Psalms. That's, that's my go-to place is the Psalms. I just love them. But pick out something in the book to encourage your heart, give you a little strengthening for that time in your life. Go to the book. I, all my heart, I believe that when we get to heaven, and I, I'll say it this way, but we're not, we're not going to have to apologize because we spent too much time in the book. Right. Okay? Amen. We're probably going to have to apologize because we didn't spend enough time in the book. Amen. Amen. And again, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. And this is, this is me. You know, we have bed's time. You know what bed's time is? You sit in front of the dumb t TV and you go, just look at it. You just stare at it. You listen to it. Bed's time's all right. But when it becomes four hours or six hours, how many people could you pray for in an hour? That's right. How many people could you pray for in two hours? And I'm going to back up and that there still should be uh, directories back there. Um, Pastor Chadwick always said, and I know Brother Copeland agrees, get the church directory out and pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ. Man. The greatest thing you can do is pray for one another. Man. But you've got to take time to do it. Man. It takes time. And it, it, you can call work. It is work. You've got to stay with it. Pray for them. Some of them you know they have special needs. Some of them don't. But find something to pray for them. Pray for your pastor. Good night. Uh, Brother Stewart could tell you, Brother Maxwell, you have no, no clue the burdens that they care, carry, the weight they're carrying. Pray for him as he goes to Arkansas. Pray that God will use him in a great way to be a blessing to the family. And maybe to those ones that are there, her people she worked with, somehow get saved. That's the greatest Amen. thing that could ever happen. And I always try to pray that way when there's a funeral, that somebody, because of that person's home going, will get saved. Amen. They will see their need. They will repent. They will trust Christ. Again, I think God's working in through all these things. So I just challenge you tonight. Rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. I'm not going to drag this out. I do have more pages. I'm going to read you a song, or at least part of it. The song is titled, God Wants to Hear You Sing. Yeah. Some of you probably know it. Some of you may not. It's talking about Paul and Silas. Their chains were fastened tight down at the jail that night. Still, Paul and Silas would not be dismayed. They said, it's time to lift our voice, sing praises to the Lord. Let's prove that we will trust him, come what may. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not thine own understanding. God wants to hear you sing. When the waves are crashing around you, when the fiery darts surround you, when despair is all you see. And some may be despairing over this election, but don't despair. Brother Copeland said it. God's still on his throne. Amen. They can't pull him off of it. That's right. Amen. God wants to hear your voice. When the wisest man has spoken and says your circumstance is as hopeless as can be, that's when God wants to hear you sing. He loves to hear our praise on our cheerful days when the pleasant times outweigh the bad by far. But when suffering comes along and we still sing him songs, that is when we bless the Father's heart. God wants to hear you sing when the waves are crashing around you, when the fiery darts surround you, when despair is all you see. God wants to hear your voice. When the wisest man has spoken and says your circumstance is as hopeless as can be, that's when God wants to hear you sing. Amen. So tonight, I just challenge you. And I think a lot of it, it keys on what I've already said. The Word of God. Amen. When you're going through the trials, when you're going through the tribulations, don't ignore it. Go to it. Pick it up. Get a concordance, whatever you need, but find that verse that God can use to touch your heart. I'll share this with you, and then I'll shut up. I'll give it back to Brother Copeland. But in '87 uh, is when my dad died. Was called home. 
but for years he had played church. He was 59 when he, when he passed. For years he told me he saved, and he's like a lot of people if he's having a biscuits and gravy over to church while he could find his way over there or a dinner. And I don't even know if he got there Christmas and Easter, but once in a while he would go. And I took my pastor after I got saved to go see him. And, oh yeah, I'm saved, no problem. And I didn't want to spit nails. I knew his life. There's no way. So for years we prayed and we prayed. A friend of mine witnessed to him. He got saved. Mm He's -hmm. in the last three months or so of his life. You know why he got saved? He was backed into a corner with lung cancer. He knew he was on his way out of this earth, out of this world. You know what? I thank God for lung cancer. If he had not contracted that, he might have lived another 20 years and died and went to hell. So I can say I thank God for lung cancer in his case. Right. But I said all that to say this. I'll never forget his funeral. It's really a homegoing celebration. I hate that word, funeral. It's, it's not for the, the Christian, the born-again saint of God. But right. I was on cloud nine. I was just... If you want to say joyful, that's what I was. I, I had that peace of God that was passing all understanding. Because God had given me that peace over the fact that he had trusted Christ as his Savior. Amen. Changed everything. Right. But I said all that say this. Even when we're going through life's trials and struggles, God can give us a song. Right. I, I don't think it's morbid. Uh, sorrowful yet rejoicing is what the, the Bible says. We can be sorrowful. And, you know, we don't like losing people. We don't like let go of them. But when you know they're saved, it just changes everything. Amen. So tonight my challenge is this. The old black preacher said it. Open that old black book. Read yourself full. Pray yourself hot. And just explode all over the place in song. Go out singing. You meet the world with a smile on your face. And the joy of his salvation upon your heart. Amen. Pastor. Amen. Are you rejoicing tonight? You know, we kind of sat for a little while last night after visitation. Just kind of vegged. Watching Fox News call this one for that one and that one for another one. And I wonder how much of our world or how much of our nation last night and even all day today have just been focused on who's winning the election. You know, how many Congress seats did we gain and how many Senate seats did we lose? And all that can cause us to take our eyes off the Lord, can't we? Amen. 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 And this has kind of been going on for months. And I just, I think the word of God's right, Brother Charlie's right tonight because of the word of God. We just need to rejoice in the Lord. Yeah. Amen. 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 You know, whether we're sick or well or whether we've lost someone or not. Right. Or whether Biden wins or Trump wins. None of that really matters. Amen. When we keep our focus on the Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you bow your heads with me and stand? If the Lord spoke to your heart tonight, won't you come down and talk to him for just a minute? <clears throat>
here tonight. Amen. Amen. Trust in the Lord always. Amen. Amen. I think that trusting and rejoicing go hand in hand. Yes, sir. It's a little hard to rejoice if you're not trusting. Amen. The Bible tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes, sir. Amen. Thank you again for coming tonight. Look forward to Saturday, soul winning, amen, bus yes. visitation, and then services on Sunday. Excited about what the Lord's going to do, amen. 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 Keep working on folks, keep praying for folks, amen. keep inviting folks, call folks that have been out, and pray for those that are sick in our church, and for those that we know. Please keep Brother uh, Bob Hudson in your prayer, and that the Lord would continue to touch his body and heal him. Amen. And, uh, and just pray that the Lord would give us a, another great Sunday. This Sunday. Amen. 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 And keep Brother Miss Chadwick in prayer as well as they are still traveling to and fro and doing different things. And, and I just that the Lord would continue to bless them and give them the meetings that they desire to have. And uh, he said that he wants to stay busy. Amen. And I said, I want you to stay busy too. <laughs> and he looked at me kind of funny. I said, not because we don't want you here, but we want you to have an opportunity to serve the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And be a blessing to other folks, amen. Yeah. All right, let's see. Uh, Brother McGregor, could you slip up here and dismiss us in prayer this evening? Thanks again, Brother Charter, for that. Yes, amen. amen. Here tonight. Lord bless everybody. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for the, what you laid on Brother Charlie's heart for us, God. Lord, help it not, our minds not dismiss it, Lord, but Lord, help us to feast on it, Lord, and meditate, Lord. Lord, help us to realize how important and precious that your word is, and prayer is, Lord, in our lives. And Lord, help us to be full of your joy, yes. Lord, no matter the circumstances. Yes. Don't allow what's going on to destroy us. But Lord, you are on the throne. Amen. You are in control. We just pray you bless us as we go our week, Lord, and bring us back Sunday, Lord. Give the pro Tim, brother pastor and brother Tim traveling mercies. Mm -hmm. Bless the family as they fellowship, Lord, and, and celebrate the homecoming of Miss Atre, Lord. Just uh, comfort the family, Lord, and lift them up. And Lord, if there's not one saved, Lord, use this opportunity to, to draw them to you, God. Well, thank you and praise you in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Just before we go home, let's turn to page 400. I wish I had given him more. Page 400. I wish I had given him more.